Ew, is this really what a priest looks like during an exorcism? If you've seen the 1973 movie, The Exorcist, you at least have some idea of what exorcism is about. It has to do with ridding a human being of diabolical possessions. It's typically associated with Roman Catholic beliefs, and if the movie is anything indication, it's very, very scary. You may remember with a shudder, the teen girl whose head spun around, her body in convulsions, her voice that of a demon spawning curses and obscenities, while the battered priest of the exorcist fought the devil to save her soul. This Hollywood version of an exorcism is supposed to be based on a real-life exorcism performed on a Maryland boy in 1949. Priests still perform exorcisms today. Is exorcism real or are the subjects and the exorcist unconsciously acting out roles from a popular movie? Are there other explanations for what some people call possession? In this video, we'll focus on the Roman Catholic exorcism rate because of its tremendous presence in popular culture. Thanks, thanks to the exorcist and its successors, we'll learn why a priest might perform an exorcism Find out what the ritual involves, take a look at a real-life exorcism, and discuss the controversy surrounding the practice. What is exorcism? The Catholic Encyclopedia defines exorcism as an act of driven out or watering off demons or evil spirits from persons, places, or things which are believed to be possessed or infested by them or are labeled to become victims of instruments of their malice. In short, it is a ritual performed by a Catholic priest to expel the devil from a person, place, or thing. There are several types of exorcism in the spiritual practice of the Roman Catholic Church. Baptismal exorcism, blessed an infant prior to baptism to cleanse it of evil resulting from original sin. Simple exorcism, blessing a place or thing to rid it of demonic influences. Real exorcism, performing the rate of exorcism to rid a human being of diabolical possessions. A real exorcism is what most of us think of when we think of exorcism. In this case, the priest exorcist is dealing with a human being who is possessed by the devil. The devil is inhabiting this person's body. According to the church telltale, signs of demonic possessions include speaking or understanding languages which a person has never learned, different from speaking in tongues, which is considered a sign of religious excessity, not possession, knowing and revealing things the person has no earthly way of knowing, physical strength beyond the person's natural physical makeup, a violence aversion to God, the Virgin Mary, the cross, or other images of Catholic faith. If you do a Google search for the 
word exorcism. You'll find ads for exorcist Wanda Pranachia, I hope I pronounced her right. <laughs> for example, claims to have 30 years experience with 25,000 successful performed exorcisms. This makes demonic possession seem like a pretty common occurrence. But to the Roman Catholic Church, it's rare. It only finds true demonic possessions in about one out of every 5,000 reported cases. So what does it take for the church to send in an exorcist? Did you know, in my six popes, Cardinal Jacques Martin reports that Pope John Paul II performed an exorcism on a woman in 1982. There are also reports that Mother Teresa underwent an exorcism shortly before her death in 1997 because the Archbishop of Calcutta believed she was being assaulted by the devil. The contents following. The investigation procedures. The exorcist, the exorcism, a real life exorcism. The investigation, the possession, possession and exorcism date back to ancient times, possibly beginning with the early shamanistic beliefs in the spirits of the dead could do harm to the living. Shamans would enter a trance state to find the troublemaking soul and discover from it the way to end the victim's pain. In ancient Egypt and Babylon cultures, illnesses and other infections were regularly attributed to evil spirits that invaded the human body, and priest healers carried out interactive ceremonies to cause the evil spirits to leave. Today, when someone reports a possible case of possession to the church, an investigation begins. Father Benedict, a Franciscan priest who holds a PhD in psychology from Columbia University, was the man the Archdiocese of New York called on to investigate cases of apparent possessions that landed on their desks in the 70s and 80s. In the American Exorcism, he describes his experience this way. When cases were referred to me, I usually sought the help out of a lawn woman in the diocese who possessed a gift for discriminating spirits in her view and also mind. None of the people I brought to her were victims of possession. None of them, in other words, were in need of a formal exorcism, but that doesn't mean they weren't being affected or oppressed in various ways by the demonic forces. Demonic oppressions is much less serious than full-scale possession and it can usually be dealt with by what we refer to as a simple prayer of deliverance. A typical investigation is essentially a process of elimination. Does the subject exhibit the telltale signs of possession by supernatural forces? Is there any other way to explain the subject's behavior besides demonic possessions? Often the priest will consult a mental health professional in his investigation in order to determine whether the 
possessed person's symptoms can be fully explained by mental illnesses. According to Michael Cunahu, American Exorcism, there are about a dozen physicians in the United States who evaluate potential possessed subjects for the Catholic Church. The subjects will also undergo a medical examination to find out if the symptoms can be attributed to a physical disorder or illness. The priest may consult a church-approved expert on the paranormal for additional input. Another possibility the investigator must consider is plain old fraud. If the priest is convinced of the validations of the possession and that an exorcism is the appropriate way to help this person, he will report back to his superior, in most cases the diocesan bishop, that an exorcism is in order. The church may then decide to send section an official exorcism and appoint an exorcist to the case. The exorcist. Appointing an exorcist. If the church decides it has a truly possessed individual on its hands, one that requires an exorcism, the next step is to appoint an exorcist to the case. This is often the same priest who perform the investigation, but not always. Casting out the devil is not part of the typical priest's daily duties. Most priests have never performed an exorcist, but some have. Official numbers are hard to come by, but American Exorcism reports that in 1996, the Catholic Church appointed 10 priests to the position of exorcist in the United States, bringing the total to 11. Sino estimates that worldwide numbers at somewhere between 150 and 300, while reports claim that are 300 to 400 official exorcists in Italy alone. There are also priests who are not officially exorcists, but claim to have permission from the Catholic bishop to perform exorcism at their discretion. Training and Execution of Exorcism The exorcism ritual had made a big comeback from being nearly extinct through most of the 20th century. Traditionally, Catholic exorcists undergo very little specific trainings to aid them in their job, while they learn a great deal about the devil and the risks and manifestations of evil. Exorcism is itself is not a specialized area of study in seminary school. What they know, they know from their experience in the role of priests and from the Roman Catholic rate of exorcism, which is the official document detailing the prayers and steps of an exorcism. Things are starting to change though. Official exorcists of the Catholic Church formed their own organization in 1992. The International Association of Exorcists holds vinyl meetings in Rome and send out newsletters to its members. In the newsletters, exorcists tell of particular difficulties or interesting cases and swap tricks of the trade. In addition, in 2005, a university connected to the Vatican started offering classes on exorcism. Once the church appoints one of its official exorcists to perform the ritual, the next step 
is to get the devil to leave the person's body. The Exorcism The Vatican reserved exorcism right. In January 1999, the Vatican issued a reserved exorcism right to be used by Catholic priests. The directions for conducting an exorcism compromised a single section in the Roman ritual. One of the books describing the official rites of the Roman Catholic Church prior to 1999. The official exorcism rite dates back to 1614. To perform the rite, the exorcist dressed in his surplice and purple stole. The ritual of exorcism is mostly a series of prayers, statements, and appeals. These prayers are loosely broken down into the empowering formula in which the priest asks the Holy Spirit to free the subject from the devil. God, who nature is ever merciful and forgiving, accept our prayer that this servant of yours, bond by the fetters of sin, may be pardoned by your loving kindness. Depart, then impose one, depart accursed one depart with all your distress for god has willed that man should be his temple to read the entire 1999 reserved right see catholic doors ministry 1999 right of exorcism in addition to the reactions the priest takes certain actions at particular times during the rite he sprinkles holy water on everyone in the room lies his hands on the subject makes the sign of the cross both on him and on the subject and touches the subject with a catholic relic usually an object associated with a saint Malashi Martin Perspective on Exorcism Malashi Martin, a former Judas priest and self-proclaimed but not official exorcist, offers additional information on exorcism, information not induced by the church, a controversial figure in the Catholic world. Martin reveals in the book Hostage to the Devil what he considers to be the typical stages of an exorcism. One, the demon is hiding its true identity. Two, the demon reveals itself. Three, the exorcist and the demon fight for the soul of the possessed. Four, if the exorcist wins the battle, the expelled demon leaves the body of the possessed. Hostage to the devil create quite a stir in the church. The book details supposedly factual exorcisms that Martin claims to have performed, assist, or witness. The exorcisms Martin described are on the level with the exorcism in terms of action and violence. Believers criticize the book thinking Martin has sentinelized and therefore belittled the power of the devil. But if Martin's vivid sense don't ring true to the church and its supporters, what does a real exorcism look like? I believe 
a 2005 Gallup poll reported that 42% of people in the United States believe in the possibility of diabolical possessions. A Real Life Exorcism Michael Cuyo's Observations In researching American exorcism, expelling demons in the land of plenty, Michael Cuyo's, a sociological professor at Foreman University attended all sorts of exorcisms. One official from the church exorcism that Cuneo sat in on involved a man he calls Warren the possessed and a priest's exorcist he calls Father Peter. Warren's life is painful to him. He is a heavy drinker, regularly has sex with people he just met, and is generally depressed. He has recently began to hear voices, see things, and feel an unbearable pressure on his body at night. In short, Warren is tormented. His local pastor contacted Father Peter's supervisor and with the agreement of the priest, they agreed an exorcism. The following details are a real life official exorcism are then taken from American Exorcism pages 243 to page 245. While Kuno does not provide a date, this exorcism most likely took place before the 1999 reservation to the right. The Exorcism of Warren in the basement of an unremarkable building in the Midwest, Father Peter in his surplice and purple stole stand directly in front of Warren who sits in a chair with his head bowed and his fists clenched. Suno sits off to the side. Father Peter begins the ritual. Allow powerful God pardon all the sins of your unworthy servant. Give me constant faith and power so that armed with my power of your holy strength I can attack this cruel evil spirit in confidence and security. While speaking these initial words, the priest sprinkles Warren, Michael Kuno, and himself with holy water. Father Peter moves closer to Warren, makes the sign of the cross, and lies his palms on Warren's forehead. Warren sits perfectly still while Father Peter recites the prayers of the exorcism ritual. Father Peter appeals to Christ, the Virgin Mary, and the saints to aid him in his endeavor to save Warren's soul. Warren remains silent. I exorcise you, most unclean spirit, all spirits, everyone of who in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ be uprooted and expelled from this creature of God. Father Peter makes a sign of the cross on Warren's forehead, presses a relic against his chest, and ultimately finishes the exorcism with Go away, seductor. The desert is your home. The serpent is your dwelling. Be humiliated and cast down. For even though you have deceived man, you cannot make a mockery of God. He has prepared hell for you and your angels. Father Peter 
then leads Warren in a few closing prayers and additional reads. He asks how he feels. Kuno remembers Warren's answer. Peaceful, Warren said, but also a bit confused. He thought he'd felt something leaving him during the exorcism, but he wasn't sure. It's not exactly the exorcist, but then that's a pretty tough act to follow. According to Cardinal Median, possession has sensational features in which the devil in a certain way takes over the physical powers of the possessed person. However, the devil cannot control the subject's free will and thoughts cannot cause him to sin. Still, the physical violence the devil exerts over the possessed person is an inducement to sin and this is what he seeks. Was Warren genuinely possessed? Did Father Peter get the devil to leave Warren's body? There are those who believe and there are those who don't, but no one got hurt and it may just be that Warren is better off having undergone the exorcism, so some might wonder what's the problem. The controversy. The battle surrounding exorcism exists mainly on two related fronts. The huge exorcism from prophet ministries that have sprung up in the last couple of decades and the psychology versus religion debate that sprang up with the advert of psychologists in the 1800s. Exorcism for Profit as soon as money enters the picture, the skeptics are going to win some ground. The rise of money-making exorcism ministries around the world leads many people who might otherwise reserve judgment to outright reject the validity of the church view of possession and exorcism. Even though the exorcism performed by these unofficial exorcists are not in any way connected to the Catholic Church. A particularly popular exorcism ministry in the United States, Bob Larson Ministries, televised its weekly conferences in this mass exorcism for which large groups can receive a family rate on tickets. Mr. Larson exorcists the demons of an auditorium full of people. Financial donations on top of the ticket price are not required for his services, but they are welcome. Psychology versus religion, where one person sees possession and pulls out his right of exorcism, another sees mental illnesses and pulls out the DSMV. This is probably the greatest debate surrounding the practice of major exorcisms. There may be eitherly explanations for behaviors the church considers evidence of diabolical possessions. Several psychological disorders including Tourette syndrome and schizophrenia can produce the types of effects seen in possessed people. People with epilepsy can suddenly go into convulsions when having a seizure. Tourette syndrome causes involuntary movements and vocal outbursts. Schizophrenia involves the auditory and visual hallucination, paranoia, delusions, and sometimes violent behaviors. Psychological issues like low self-esteem and narcissism 
can cause a person to act out the role of possessed persons in order to gain attention. In a case where the subject is in fact suffering from mental issues, the church is doing harm by labeling the person possessed if this prevents the person from seeking out the medical treatment. Cardinal Jorge introduced the new right for exorcism to the press in 1999. Response to the conflict this way. Exorcism is one thing and psychologist is another. If the exorcist has any doubt about the mental health of the possessed, he should consult an expert. It often happens that simple people confuse systematic problems with diabolical influences, but not everything can be attributed to the devil. The ultimate question remains, does exorcism help people or harm people? It is difficult to come by documentation and any outcomes of official Roman Catholic exorcisms, harmful or beneficial. This is by designing, according to the official right, exorcisms are supposed to be low key, not necessarily secret, but not performed in public or in front of a press release so that the ritual does not become a show rituals are not to be published whether the exorcism is a success or a failure there is considerable documentations however of the harmful outcomes of exorcisms performed outside the catholic church one widely reported incident took place in June 2005 in Tuscan, Romania. A priest and several nuns in Romania Orthodox convent believe that a nun that was 23 years old who lived in the convent was possessed. So they carried out an exorcism ritual. They tied her to a cross, pushed a towel into her mouth and left her alone without food and water. The intent was to drive out the demon inhabiting her body. Consequences. She died after three days. Officials believe the young woman had schizophrenia. Exorcism in popular culture. Hollywood alone has produced a number of films depicting exorcism, including but by no means limited to the following The Exorcist, 1973, The Amityville Horror, 1979, Poltergeist, 1982, Responses. 1990, Stigmata, 1999, Lost Souls, 2000, The Exorcist, The Beginning, 2004, The Amityville Horror, 2005, The Exorcism of Emily Rose, 2005. So that is it for now, guys. I hope you found this video very interesting and you found out some stuff you didn't know necessarily about exorcism and i would like to say a very big thank you so much for watching if you like this video please give it a thumbs up if you're new to the channel please consider subscribing for more videos like this and i'll see you around the broom somewhere <laughs>